Viewers at all, you are welcome to my presentation on transfer pricing. In this presentation, I will examine the meaning of transfer price. Two, I will give the step-by-step -step approach for solving problems involving transfer pricing. Steps for solving problems involving transfer price. Number three, I will give the format. Format for preparing income statement when transfer pricing is involved. Format for preparing income statement when transfer pricing is involved. I will explain how to determine the minimum transfer price the selling division will be willing to accept. Minimum price the selling division will be willing or will be willing to accept. Number five, I will explain how to determine the maximum transfer price the buying division will be willing to pay. The maximum transfer price the buying division will be willing to pay. I will also solve standard examination questions from ACC past examination questions. Please, if this is your first time of coming across my channel, or if you have not subscribed in the past, please hit the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so that you'll be able to receive a notification message each time I drop a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. Remember that transfer price is an internal price at which goods and services are sold between the member of the group in the same organization. Transfer price is an internal transfer, it's an, it's an internal price at which goods and services are sold between the member of the same group. I want you to know transfer price is an internal arrangement. So anytime you hear from the, me the word transfer, that means there is an exchange of goods or services between the members of the same group. E.g., if you have two X, Y, and Z company, if X, Y, and Z company is is having two division. We have division X and division Y. Remember, X and Y are both member of the same group. If division S sells to division Y, at the same time, division X may sell externally. Why division Y will only sell to external buyers? Remember, both X and Y are member of X, Y, and Z group. Therefore, if X want to sell to Y, at what price should X sell to Y? The price at which these two divisions in the same organization will exchange goods or services, that price is called the transfer price. That is why I say transfer price is an internal arrangement it's an internal price at which goods or services are sold between the members of the same group or the same division so the price at which two divisions sells goods and services to one another is said to be the transfer price steps for solving problems on transfer price steps for solving problems on transfer price Step one, these are the steps you need to follow. Step number one, identify the maximum production capacity of the selling division. The first step is to identify, identify the production capacity. Capacity of the selling division. That is the first step. You identify the production capacity of the selling division. Step two, identify the external demand of the selling division. Identify 
the demand by external customers of the selling division. Step three, identify the or check the transfer pricing policy of the management. Check the management policy. Check the management policy on transfer on transfer price. In some cases, it may be the policy that division X must sell to Y before considering any sales to external customers. And you may be told that division Y also must buy from division X. So you might have such uh, principles or policy in examination question. So whether the selling division must sell to I told you that the policy should be whether the selling division division must first consider the need of the buying division before considering the external customers. Before considering the needs of the external customers. Or whether the buying division must buy from the selling division. Step number four. Step number four. Consider whether there is a fixed transfer price to use in the problem. Check if there is a fixed transfer price to use or or whether there is a specific method of determining the transfer price or whether there is a specific method of determining the transfer price. All these have to be considered. Step five. Transfer price may be based on opportunity cost, where there is no fixed transfer price. It may be based, transfer price may be based on opportunity cost. Transfer price may be based. Transfer price may be based on opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. When there is no fixed transfer price, or when the predetermined transfer price is not given, so the transfer price may be based on opportunity cost concept. So I therefore want to explain the concept of opportunity cost. When transfer pricing is involved, opportunity cost in relation to transfer price. Opportunity cost 
is the value of benefit sacrificed in expense of others. The value of benefit sacrificed in expense of others. When we talk about of opportunity cost, we are talking about the value of the benefit that we, the entity have to forego if certain decision is taken. The value of benefit forego or forgone. Benefit forego as a result of taking a particular decision. That is opportunity cost. Often, to apply the concept of opportunity cost, we used to calculate the contribution that had to be forgo if a certain choice is taken. Remember contribution margin. Contribution margin is the selling price less variable cost per unit. Selling price less variable cost per unit. So we said the contribution that the entity has to forgo or that the entity will have to forgo as a result of making a particular choice or taking a particular decision. That is what we mean by the opportunity cost. So under opportunity cost approach, transfer price is the variable cost of production of the selling division. Variable transfer price is variable production cost per unit of the selling division. Variable production cost per unit of the selling division. Division plus, I said the variable production cost per unit of the selling division plus the benefit for gone or contribution for gone as a result of making the transfer plus the contribution for gone from making the transfer if you make the transfer what are the contribution you are, you are supposed to earn if that product is sold externally, that that contribution will not be earned if you choose to transfer at the variable cost. Just look at it that the price to make your transfer should be the variable cost of production. But now, because you want to transfer that product at the variable cost of production, how much is the contribution you will have earned from external sales? that you will not be able to earn from making the transfer at the variable cost of production. That is what we mean by the opportunity cost of making the transfer. I want to illustrate the opportunity cost concept of making the transfer. X and Y are two divisions in X, Y, and Z group of companies. The following details are available in respect of Division X. The capacity of Division X is 10,000 units. External selling price is $50. Division Y needs 8,000 units of Division X product as raw materials for its final product, final production. And you were told that transfer is based on opportunity cost. What is the ideal transfer price if external demand of division X is Variable cost per unit of division X is $30. What is the ID transfer price if external demand of division X is 1? 
10,000 units. Two, zero units. Three, 6,000 units. Solution. You have been told that the capacity of division X is 10,000 units. I have given the selling price, external market price, external selling price of division X to be $50. The variable cost per unit of division X is given to be $30. And you are to, and you were told that division Y needs eight thousand units. That is units to transfer is eight thousand units. That is the number of units required by division Y. Now you are to determine the ID transfer price if external demand of division X is 10,000 units. External demand of division X is 10,000 units. I've told you that you check your capacity, the capacity of division X, and that is given to be 10,000 units. The external demand of division X is 10,000 10, units in Roman figure one. That means if division X choose to sell everything externally, division X will be able to sell all they have produced at the external market price of $50. Division X will be able to sell everything at $50. Then there is no excess supply. No excess supply and no excess demand. So in this case, demand equal the supply. Demand equal to supply. Now, if division X choose to transfer at the variable cost of production, transfer price. I said transfer price will be based on variable cost of production, and which is given to be $30. Division X choose to transfer at $30. How much will be the contribution division S will forgo from making the sales externally? Remember, division S will be able to sell all they have produced to external customers at $50. That means the contribution for go now on every unit transfer, contribution for go, on every unit, or contribution for go, on every unit transferred by division X. Remember the external market price is $50. Minus the variable cost per unit is $30. That means X will forgo $20 on every unit transferred. So, the ID transfer price now will be $50. That is, the variable cost of production of division X plus opportunity cost of making the transfer. The opportunity cost of making the transfer is the contribution for go from making the sales to external customers. Therefore, what will that be the revenue now? From this product now, revenue Revenue. This revenue, your revenue will be divided into external and internal. Remember what division Y needs is 8,000 units. Division Y needs 8,000 units. And that means you will sell, you will transfer 8,000 and sell the remaining 2,000 from 10,000 production capacity. From capacity of 10,000, you will transfer 8,000, then you sell the remaining 2,000 units externally. Therefore, the, the external sales now will be 2,000 units times $50.
why the internal transfer revenue from internal transfer that is the number of units transfer which is eight thousand times the transfer price which is fifty dollar so the revenue now will be two thousand times fifty and that will give us one hundred thousand dollar one hundred thousand dollar that is revenue from external internal revenue will be eight thousand times fifty and that will give us four hundred thousand dollar so this is the total revenue from the product of the selling division that is two thousand plus ten plus eight thousand that will give us the ten thousand units produced Roman figure two, we have external demand is zero. That means no external demand. Roman figure two, the ideal transfer price based on opportunity cost concept, I said you have variable cost of production, which is $30 plus contribution for goal or opportunity cost of making the transfer. How much will be the contribution you are going to forego if you choose to make the transfer? If you transfer 8,000, remember external demand in second case. You know the capacity is 8,000. You know you have the capacity to be 8,000, eh, 10,000, sorry. Capacity, capacity is 10,000. The external demand in Roma figure 2 is, is zero. In this case, there is SS supply excess supply of 10,000 now that means if you did not transfer anything if you did not transfer anything then you will not be able to sell anything because no one will buy anything from you the only option you have is just to transfer so if transfer is based on opportunity cost concept what is the opportunity cost? How much is the contribution you will forego from external sales? Since no sales will be made externally, that means there will be no contribution for go. The contribution for go is nil. Therefore, the transfer price will be the variable cost of production, which is $30. So how much will that be your revenue? Revenue. Revenue. External revenue from external sales is nil since no unit was sold externally. No unit was sold externally. The revenue from internal transfer you'll be able to transfer 8,000 units at the transfer price, which is the variable cost of production of $30. So, 8,000 times 30, there you have 240,000. 240,000 dollars. That is the revenue. That means the only revenue you will have in this case, since no unit was sold externally, is the revenue from internal transfer. Then Roman figure 3, we are the external sales is 6,000 units. We are the external sales is 6,000 units. And remember the transfer price is based on opportunity cost. In this case, you have the capacity. In Roma figure three, capacity of division X still remain 10,000 units. Then the demand of division X is 6,000 units. In this case, there is an excess, excess supply. Excess supply of 4,000 units. I remember transfer price is based on opportunity cost concept. If the transfer is based on opportunity cost, what is the ID transfer price? You are going to have two transfer price here. 
Remember, I've told you that transfer price is always the variable cost of production. Now, what will be the transfer price on the excess supply of 4,000 units? Excess supply. Supply of 4,000 units. The transfer price. Transfer price. Will be the variable cost of production. And the variable cost of production is still $30. $30 per unit. What will be the contribution you will forego if you choose to transfer the 4000 Contribution forego. If you choose to transfer the 4000 how much is the contribution you will forego? Remember, if you did not transfer the 4000 you will not be able to sell that 4000 externally. So you, if you do not transfer it, you will not be able to sell it. That means there will be no contribution you will earn on that 4000 So the contribution for go on the 4000 will be near. Therefore, the ideal transfer price on that 4000 will be the variable cost of production, which is $30. Now, remember the number of units required or needed by the buying division is 8,000 units. That is the number of units you want to transfer. That means if you choose to transfer additional 4,000, you have to reduce the external demand from 6,000 to 2,000 so that you'll be able to make the transfer of the 4,000 units, of additional 4,000 units. That means you want to make the transfer of additional 4,000 units from this 6,000 after considering the excess supply of 4,000. Then if you want to transfer more units, then you have to reduce the external demand. So if you reduce the external demand by 4,000 so that you'll be able to transfer additional 4,000 to division Y in order to increase the number of unit transfer from 4,000 to 8,000. So the transfer price, additional 4,000 units now. Additional 4,000 units in order to increase the unit transfer from 4,000, additional 4,000 units from 4,000 units to 8,000 units. I told you that transfer price will be variable cost of production of the selling division. And that variable cost is $30. Plus the opportunity cost of making the transfer, which is the contribution you have to forego. Contribution foregone. Remember, you'll be able to sell this additional 4,000 units if you choose not to transfer it. External buyers or customers will buy it. So that means... An attempt for you to transfer it at 30 naira, $30. The contribution you will have earned from this extra 4,000 units will be for gold. So, how much will that be the contribution for gold? Contribution is the selling price, which is $50, minus variable cost of production, which is $30. That means the contribution of $20 will be for gold. Then you have $20. $30 plus. $50, and $30 plus $20, that will give us $50. So now, what will that be the revenue that will be recognized in the financial statement? So your revenue now, revenue, you have external. Remember, you have reduced the units that will be sold externally from 6,000 to 2,000. Then that will be 2,000 units will be sold at the external market price, which is $50. And that will give us $100,000. The revenue from internal transfer, internal transfer. You have first 4,000 units at the variable cost of production, which is $30. The variable cost of production, transfer price, at the variable cost of production, which is $30. 4,000 times $30, and that will give us $120,000. Then, additional, additional 4,000. 
4,000 units at the second transfer price, which was obtained to be $50. We have $4,000 at, I mean 4,000 units at $50. And that will give us $200. Thousand dollar. Therefore, revenue from internal transfer will be one twenty thousand plus two hundred thousand, and that will give us three twenty thousand dollar. That is the revenue from internal transfer. After the determination of transfer price, you may then prepare the income statement using this format. Income statement. You may have for selling division. You may have buying division. You may have for the combined company. So you are going to have your revenue. Your revenue will be divided into two. Revenue from external sales and revenue from internal transfer. No, the revenue from internal transfer will be earned by the selling division alone and it will not be in the combined. Remember, intercompany items will be eliminated intercompany items will be eliminated and this will be our total revenue total revenue let's label that as a then from revenue you less variable cost our variable cost we start with variable cost of production The variable cost of production will be divided into two. The one from internal transfer. Internal transfer. It is the buying division that will incur that. It will not be in the total because it is an intercompany item. Then we have other variable cost of production. Others. Other variable cost of production. You are going to have it in both divisions. Other variable cost of production. Other variable cost of production, you may have variable selling and distribution. Variable selling and distribution. Remember, you don't incur variable selling and distribution on the units transferred. You will not incur the variable selling and distribution on the units transferred. Then variable, the, the reason, I only have it under the buying division because the number of units not transferred, you will say in cure variable selling and distribution on the units not transferred. That is the units sold to external customers. So now let's have variable admin expenses. And now, you sum up the variable cost. We have the total variable cost. They have that as B. Then you now let the total variable cost from total revenue. You have the total contribution. Total contribution. Remember, contribution will be your revenue less variable cost. I have tagged the revenue letter A and the variable cost letter B. Revenue A, variable cost B. So that is our contribution. From the contribution, you less the fixed cost. Remember, we often used to absorb our fixed cost. We used to absorb it based on the normal capacity. If I say normal, normal capacity, I'm talking about budgeted capacity. So you have budgeted you have 
fixed production overheads, which will be absorbed based on the budgeted production or budgeted quantity. Then fixed selling and distribution. So you less it, you less fees admin, admin expenses. So when you less out the fees cost, when you subtract fees cost from the, when you subtract fees cost from the contribution, then you arrive at the net profit, net profit. So that is the income statement. And where the performance is measured, where the performance is measured based on the residual income, then you are going to less the inputted interest from the divisional profit in order to get the residual profit. So for better understanding, so you try to watch my presentation on divisional performance. From the above format, it is the selling division that used to have revenue from internal transfer. Why it is the buying division that used to have variable costs from internal transfer. Take note of that. So, the next area I'm going to consider is the determination of the minimum transfer price per unit. That the selling division would accept. The determination of the minimum transfer price per unit that the selling division would accept. Or the maximum transfer price per unit that the buying division will be willing to pay. Anytime you are to determine the minimum transfer price or the maximum transfer price, so you work back. In order to achieve a targeted profit, anytime you have the profit target and you want to determine the minimum or the maximum transfer price, that will be set. In order to achieve that profit target, you work back. Anytime you are to determine the transfer price to set, to achieve a certain profit target, you work back. So that is what I'm going to explain now. Your income statement is prepared using this format. You have your revenue, less variable cost, less fixed cost, that will give us the profit. What transfer price will be required to achieve a targeted profit? By, we have the selling division. You have the revenue of the selling division and revenue of the buying division. For selling division, I've told you that the revenue of the selling division will be divided into two. Revenue from external, external sales, and revenue from internal transfer. That is for selling division. And I've told you that the variable production cost, variable production cost, cost of the buying division, I said it will be divided into two. The variable production cost from internal transfer and uh, variable order and others variable production cost. I want you to take note of this. Remember, I've told you that the income statement is prepared using this model. Revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost equals to profit. Remember, your revenue is the product of price and quantity. If revenue is price times quantity, the price, your, your revenue, the price you need here, we want to, our focus is the determination of the transfer price, which is part of the revenue. Therefore, you just make your revenue the subject of the formula. So to make revenue the subject of the formula, so you have revenue, equals to profit plus fixed cost plus variable cost. So our revenue equals to profit 
plus fixed cost plus variable cost. And that is the model we are going to use. So, I said we want to look at the determination of the maximum transfer price per unit that the buying division would be willing to pay to achieve a residual income target, which will be calculated jobs. Remember, residual income, residual income, and that will be divisional profit, that is your net profit, net profit of the division, less minus inputted interest. Inputted interest. So for better understanding, try to watch my presentation on divisional performance. The minimum transfer price per unit. The minimum transfer price per unit that the selling division would accept to achieve to achieve a targeted to achieve a residual to achieve a residual income target that will be so you use this format you start with targeted residual income targeted residual income then plus inputted interest plus inputted interest your inputted interest will be cost of capital times capital employed that will give us the inputted interest when you add the inputted interest to the residual income then you get the divisional profit divisional net profit Now that we have got the net profit, which is this, then you add the fixed cost. You have got this, then you add the fixed cost. So we have plus fixed cost. After adding the fixed cost, you get the targeted contribution. Then, after the targeted contribution, then you add the variable selling and distribution. You add variable selling and distribution, you add variable cost. You know, after contribution, after you've added fixed cost, you get contribution, then you add the variable cost. Your variable cost may include variable selling and distribution, variable selling and uh, distribution then variable at me then you have the variable production remember I've divided the variable production cost into two that of internal and that of others Remember, this is for the selling division. I've told you that the selling division will not incur internal variable cost, but we only incur other variable costs. So it is others that will be considered. 
So when you add all the variable cost, you get the revenue, total revenue, total revenue, total revenue. Then this total revenue is divided into two: the revenue of the selling division, and I mean. The, in revenue from external sales and revenue from internal transfer. At this juncture, you less revenue from external sales. So by the time you less this, then you get the revenue from internal transfer. The revenue from internal transfer you now divide it by the number of units transferred. Number of units transferred. Then you get the transfer price. The result obtained under this method is the minimum transfer price per unit that the selling division would accept to achieve a target residual income. The second one I'm going to consider is the maximum determination of the maximum transfer price per unit that the buying, the, by, that the buying division will be willing to pay to achieve a targeted residual income. And if it is not targeted residual income, if it is to achieve a certain profit target, that means you will just start from here. The net profit or divisional profit. So you add the fixed cost. Where it is not residual income, that is the target. In order to achieve a targeted profit, just start with divisional profit. You add the fixed cost, you get your contribution. You add variable cost to get the total revenue. So you just continue from this divisional net profit. So that is where it is not the residual income that is the target to achieve a certain profit target. That is for that. So the second one, determination of the maximum transfer price per unit, the maximum transfer price per unit that the buying division division would be willing to pay to achieve a target a targeted residual income So, to determine the maximum transfer price per unit, the buying division will be willing to pay to achieve a targeted residual income. You may use of this format. So, you start with the targeted residual income. Income. You add inputted interest. Inputted interest, it is similar to the first format. Then you arrive at the divisional net profit. It is similar to the first format. After the divisional net profit, you add the fixed cost. Just like the first one. Where you are going to have fixed selling, you add the fixed cost, fixed selling and distribution. After that, your fixed cost will be absorbed based on the normal capacity. You have the fixed administrative expenses.
Then you have the fixed production cost. Then after adding all the fixed cost, you arrive at the targeted contribution. Targeted contribution. After adding the targeted contribution, then you add variable selling and distribution. You add variable selling and distribution. Selling and distribution. Then you have the variable admin, if any. Variable admin expenses, if any. Variable production cost. Variable production cost or overheads. That of others. Now, remember this is for buying division. Then you will have the variable cost from internal transfer. Variable cost from internal transfer. Note the that of the selling division do, uh, does not include this. Variable cost from internal transfer. Internal transfer. This remember the variable cost from internal transfer that will be the transfer price multiplied by the quantity transferred. Transfer price multiplied by the quantity transfer. So, remember the quantity transfer will be given, but the transfer price is not given. That is what you are looking for. So, that means, let us assume the unit transfer is 10,000. That means you are going to have 10,000 P. So, now let me just have PQ. So, after this, you now add. You add everything, you get the total revenue. Total revenue. I'm going to call it total revenue function because it will be in terms of P. It is it, it will be in terms of P, certain value plus maybe 3x plus 2000, but it will be in terms of P or 3p plus 2000. So it will be in terms of P. So that is total revenue. So that is why I call it total revenue function because the P is not no. So, but you'll be given the revenue from external uh, revenue of the buying division. Remember, buying division sells everything externally. That means at the external market price. So, you are going to equate the total revenue function obtained here. Total revenue function. You equate it to the total revenue revenue of the buying division. division. So when you equate it to it, the total revenue of the buying division may be given or just multiply the market price per unit of the buying division by the total number of units sold by the buying division. That will give you the total revenue of the buying division. So when you equate the revenue function to that, it becomes an equation. Then you solve, then solve the equation for P. So when you solve for P, the value you obtained will be the maximum transfer price per unit that the buying division will be willing to pay 
to achieve a residual income target. And where it is not a residual income, where you have to determine the maximum transfer price per unit that the, selling, the, that the buying division will be willing to pay to achieve a targeted profit. And that targeted profit will be given. So you just start from here. You start from divisional net profit down. So that means you are going to ignore the targeted residual income and the imputed interest. You are going to ignore these two. Targeted residual income and imputed interest. So you start from division and net profit down. So you solve for it. So that is how to tackle it. Because of our time, so I may not be able to solve examination questions in this part. So the next part of this quest of this presentation, so we cover a comprehensive examination question, which I'm going to use as a work example. Thanks.